All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Young Un Dota 2 tournament. Here we have another best of three I'm series, this time the third place bad. match between LGD Gaming and Invictus Gaming. Of course, we just got done with a great best of three series in the semifinals between IG and Tongfu. Tongfu playing amazingly well. They'll move on with Zhou, of course, leading the way there. But here we go. The third place match just has arrived here. Of course, I'm beyond this. My name is Ma. With me tonight is Basekip. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, doing very well. Really Five looking forward to this remaining. this match. Maybe even more than the than the previous series uh, as well. So let's get underway. Oh, yeah, geez. absolutely. Honestly, these are two powerhouse teams that really uh, not necessarily underperform, but against Tong Fu, you wouldn't expect them to lose there, especially with IG performing the way they have been recently. Same thing with LGD. Obviously, they went down previously in the other semifinals. Of course, a, a rough matchup for them Ten against Team DK really? going 2-1 there. Uh, still an okay team to go down against, and we'll Five see what they can do here against IG. And we saw IG play a bit of a, a decent series between Tong Fu, but they were on the receiving end of a level 1 Roshan in game number 3. A little bit of a misplay coming out for them as as well, coming through, you know, sort of the later stages of Game 3 and just having a bit of a rough time in terms of team fighting, in terms of getting things together. Uh, their draft was solid all around, I think, for every game. So uh, what do they need to change here? Maybe pick up, a, you know, in terms of a better draft, maybe just trying to fight earlier on, try to pick, you know, better lineups. What do they need to do here against Team LGD? Uh, I don't think there's anything that they particularly need to change. So, you know, compared to the previous series, but I do think they have to be they have Ten to be prepared for this Ten series. Seconds, you know, they've already played a really grueling series uh, so far. Five so we'll see if that's remaining. if that's rattled them at all. I guess the one thing to keep in mind against IG's LGD is that their style is really five man oriented. If they're behind a little bit in the early game, they will five man smoke. Uh, if they're ahead a little bit from the early game, they will five man and take down towers, that's pretty much just how LGD plays, so IG might have to be prepared to play a little bit more of a split push oriented style, uh, and maybe we'll start seeing some of the YYF Nature's Profit, things like that, just to drag LGD around the map and, you know, force them to play a, a game that they're not as comfortable with. And you mention it, and all of a sudden it gets picked up, unsurprisingly. It just it, It's two different playstyles clashing, and with YYF, he played a very, very good Nature's Prophet in that last series. I think it was in game number two, and we'll see if he can do the same thing this time around and, and just try to take advantage of LGD, maybe a little bit in terms of misplays, in terms of LGD trying to fight too early, but you mentioned how aggressive they can be, and that's just their play style. Now, they'll, you know, five in until the cows come home, and we'll see that happen, especially with whatever heroes they pick up here. I don't expect to see too much of a crazy draft from them they can go for rubik Five which we see so remaining. often from pretty much every team but they're gonna go for the shadow demon timbersaw interestingly enough and IG's i don't mind this at all pick. considering timbersaw was available we've seen how good it can be kabu played in the last game but shadow demon though question mark yeah i'm not so sure about the the shadow demon pickup i wouldn't call it a first pick support at all right now i mean i wouldn't have been too surprised to see something like the rubik uh, this could see lgd maybe moving towards something like the lashrac as their secondary support um you know so they can run some early ganks Ten and then they can push remain. down at uh, the tier ones fairly quickly which is you know again uh, a big part remain. of their overall game plan most of the time uh otherwise i'm i'm not sure what quite to make of it and yeah they are going to pass the rubik IG's back to back to, to ig and no big surprises to see the timber saw either very common pickup these days. Yeah, standard draft with the exception of the Shadow Demon. You're just kind of scratching your head there. You're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But at the same time, I'm sure it's fine. Um, and you mentioned something about a setup stun Ten with a less track. Maybe I, I think that does open the door to possibilities there. But at the same time, yeah, Five maybe I would have said maybe remaining. an Invoker Sunstrike. But Yao likes to play mm -hmm. those kind of initiators rather than maybe an Invoker necessarily. Still, that could happen. Yao's yeah, Invoker LGD's is legit. Turn. That's it true. It is a hundred percent legit. Yeah, I I'd love to see to that. Ban. Well, maybe maybe it is the Sunstrike combo that you do see, you know, from time to time. I'm not 100% sure, though. I think that it's still early to tell here in the draft. But the Shadow Demon pick first, I feel like they could have gotten away with that at, like, the third pick. Ten so it leaves you wondering. Yeah. Maybe they got away. Like, maybe they went too ahead of themselves Five here. They could have picked something remaining. a little bit better that worked early on. I'm not sure. Yeah, so I do get rid of the Doom here and the Storm Spirit. LGDs I'm not sure if they're moving towards something in particular or they're just sick of playing at the doom maybe they're trying to lead into the dk for mid something like that maybe they're actually going to be the ones applying the five man pressure and going for the early pushes they definitely could it could Ten be your standard remaining. say dragon knight mid you put the chen in the jungle and well actually chen's going to be taken here by lgd but could also still be a five man lineup for ig maybe with like a dk and a, and a luna we'll have to see how split push oriented they want to go 
Yeah, I'm not sure myself at this point. I think that they probably could have used the Chen to great effect there, especially with the Nature's Prophet who can go off lane. You have a dual lane down bottom. You split the lanes up to very effectively get experience and gold for everyone and not really too, you know, be too worried about the opposing team lanes. But for now, it is going to be that Chen up on LGD Gaming, so they'll have Ten that going for them. They do need another support, a mid, a carry. Um, no, not another support because they have that Chen already. Excuse remaining. me. They need a mid and a carry right now for LGD Gaming. So their draft is pretty straightforward from here on out. Luckily, there's still only one so ban left from IG, so they can't take too much out of the pool. With IG, they have a pick for themselves. It's 1 minute and 30 seconds left in reserve time. And really, what are they going to pick up here? They've got a lot of options to go for them. You, you mentioned a couple of the heroes they could go for. I wouldn't mind seeing the DK, and I think that could be a very good hero. And I think that, honestly, it, it runs very effectively for Friar 430, who played in the first game of the last series. And he did okay. It wasn't really his fault that he got doomed every second of the game. They're going to go for the Life Sealer in, instead, and I like this pickup pick. a lot. I think that it works very well, and I think that it's a good team fight for against Timbersaw. But then again, they're picking that right into a Shadow Demon, which makes me question it just a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, I mean, Demonic Purge is annoying, but it doesn't lock the Life Stealer out of the game completely in the same way, you know, in the way that a Bane or uh, a Razor kind of does. So if LGD really want to deal with the Nakes, uh, then they might have to deviate a little bit from Ten their plan, seconds. which I think is, you know, maybe looking towards something like a Luna as their carry, uh, and then something else as a pusher. I guess another hero that's worth mentioning at this point, since we don't have the one position yet for LGD, is the is the Pugma, oh, but they are going to end up going for the Weaver here. So another, you know, a hero that doesn't suffer too much at the hands of the Lifestealer, but it does slow down their lineup a little bit waiting for the Weaver, and IG have a plan LGD's in mind for that. And this, bend. we saw this before, but this time, it, it was from LGD. They had the Puck and the Life Stealer together. Those Infest Worms are so strong. I feel like you couple those two heroes together in the early game, and against somebody like a Weaver, against somebody like a Chen, against somebody like a Shadow Demon, it can blow them Ten up. It destroys them remaining. very quickly with Dream Coil, with Waning Rift, with Illusora, plus the Infest damage Five on top of that. Remaining. That's a lot of abilities that really just can cripple your lineup and even kill them all together outright. Reserve so time. with IG, they're looking for this, maybe have a little bit of split push with the Nature's Prophet, but have a lot of damage from the Puck and the Life Stealer. plus Ruby can see whatever spells he can grab his hands with. Disruptor's going to get a fifth ban right now from LGD IG's Gaming, and that scene, that's when you know things are starting to shift when when disruptor starts getting fifth band and that's very interesting you're just like really that's he's crazy. trending yeah he is he's, he's trending, trending on twitter yeah. that's right or in dota <laughs> i guess if you want to say that but still um the last pick coming out from lgd it's going to be a mid hero you could see invictus gaming they targeted that dk they don't want that going towards them they have to deal with the puck with the phase shift obviously to try to juke that breathe fire just the damage in general and of course that semi-carry potential and the pushing so lgd gaming they've got a couple of Ten options for them we'll see what they want to do here Okay. Well, that's that's one thing you can do. That's, that's the thing. Turn to pick. That's actually a very good thing as well up against a puck. Uh, he might have some trouble. And really, I think IG just put the life stealer mid. I think I think IG the response is probably just to put the the life stealer mid. Um, LGD could one up them again by putting the weaver mid and putting the OD safe flame, and then would end up with some really weird situations. But IG can't afford to have the puck. Uh, go up against Ten the OD. Seconds. It's just way too much of a hindrance to the puck. He doesn't get his early farm, doesn't get a timely seconds. blink dagger, and just doesn't doesn't get enough. They could try it maybe and just have some really heavy ganking if they pick up another uh, heavy ganking support here as their second one. But otherwise, I think they have to. They're going to have to adjust somehow. They really will, and and. It's like maybe they even forgot about it because, to be honest with you, I, I didn't see that coming, and I, I really should have. That's a very strong hero for LGD Gaming against that puck, against really anybody in that lineup. It's just like, oh, there's an outworld devour variable. Let's let's go ahead and take that. They'll go ahead and pick up the Lich, and maybe now they're going to more be more oriented Lich against the dual lane or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's like Lich Life Stealer dual lane give puck farm bot maybe. So yeah, you, you have the dual lane mid, and that should be a good way to. Uh, to handle the OD. But again, LGD can also make an adjustment of their own and put the OD top and, and put the Weaver mid if they if they really want to. But I think the OD should do just fine against the dual lane. It's really IG that are sort of scrambling to, to find an answer to this last pick OD. And it's kind of frustrating because I really liked IG's draft up until then. And you just have to say, you have to play LGD's game against that that OD. And it's it's almost annoying in that sense. But at the same time, you mentioned it, OD should do just fine here. 
Welcome back to the Fangio and Dota 2 tournament, guys. Okay, it's a best of three series here in the third place match between IG and LGD Gaming. We're going to get right underway real quick. We'll get some introductions done here before we jump in. So on the side of Invictus Gaming, going down, of course, in that semifinal against Tong Fu, we've got Ha, who will be up on the Life Stealer with the moniker, I don't care, a typical NA Dota name, but uh, this time going for IG. Faith will be on the Rubik once again. Banana on the Lich. They're going to go with that aggro tri lane top. At least for now, there will be some aggression there. Just try to ward up real quick. And, of course, the well is going to be YYF on that Nature's Prophet. Also up in that top lane, who I missed. Coming very slowly, but surely, is going to be Ferrari 430 on that puck to round out IG's lineup. Yeah, and quickly over on LGD, uh, we have... Oh, we've got Rabbit, formerly known as Xiao2G, over on the Weaver. We've got Xiao8 on the OD. DD is going to be on the Chen. Yao will be on the Timbersaw. And that's going to leave uh, DDC to handle the Shadow Demon. Yeah, he decided to go for those Chinese characters, making it a real pain in the ass for any caster to say, okay, except for obviously <laughs> the Chinese caster to say, who is this? Uh, but that's fine nonetheless. So looking like right now they are going to rotate out of that top lane. They're not going to stay there. Uh, how is rotating? Maybe staying in the mid lane, I'm not sure. We actually see Ferrari 430 going back here to the mid lane, so it looks like the he will start begins. right now, at least in this mid lane, which will be up against that OD. They're not going to go for that dual lane mid, which... Um, as of right now, we may see some rotations early on, but w we thought it was going to be that dual lane made at least for now, but it doesn't seem to be... I can't call anything because Ferrari 430 is actually moving out of the way, and I know it is going to be the dual lane. All right, well... Yeah, I think he was just blocking a little bit to start. If you look at his build, that's not a mid build at all uh, for the puck, so... Yeah, the salve, yeah. yeah. he's going to be farming. Yep. So he's not worried about that early bottle, uh, so it looks like... Banana will try to grab rune control here against Xiao Wei, and, and Hao is just going to sit and farm, which is how you really just do the dual lane mid. But, yeah, I mean, this is going to happen. Xiao is just going to keep using that astral, and then that's fine. He'll just gain intelligence over a course of time. Up in that top lane, it is going to be the off lane of YYF up against Rabbit here, Xiao Tuji on that Weaver, with some supports in the jungle to help him out. You can see DDC's roaming around right now. DD's farming in the jungle with that Chen. And down bottom, the off lane of Yao is actually taking quite a bit of damage already. Some harassment from Ferrari 430 on that Puck, who... He can do some damage, whether through spells, whether through right-click. It, it's a possibility nonetheless. So we'll see how the early game goes. There's going to be smoke gang coming from LGD, and they're already wrapping around here. Up the stairs they may go, and, and at a kill they may find. YWF, he's got boots level 1. It's not going to matter if you get disrupted. Centaur Conqueror Stomp is going to fly here in just a moment, and it'll go. There's going to be Shikuji damage. YWF is going to fall. Very easy kill for Zhao Chuji. Excuse me, Rabbit. So he grabs the kill nicely done already for LGD Gaming. Yeah, really nicely played, and they managed to get the first blood uh, over on the Weaver as well. And this is already a pretty good matchup for the Weaver to start with. The Shadow Demon can just kind of run pulls don't stop. Oh, and Yao dies to IG on bottom lane. Yeah, and that's only two heroes, which is surprising. And with reactive armor, you, you think that he maybe should survive there, but apparently that's a lot of damage he's got to deal with, so interesting. Yeah, Yao just gets brought down. Faith almost dies to Alpha Wolves. <laughs> over in the over in the neutrals. That would have been well. I guess if he bought out, it would have been fine. But he's actually gonna maybe babysit this double damage rune. He can actually pick it up. No, he's just gonna deny it. Strangely, he will buy, and looks like he's just gonna deny himself to these alpha wolves right now. So, rest in peace, faith. You're a good Rubik player. You're gonna die though. So he'll fall. No surprises there. In the mid lane, that dual lane still going to town here. Ten last hits coming out from the. Uh, life stealer, and on the other side of the coin, it's six last hits for Xiao Eight, which is an okay start against a dual lane, but it, it it might get tougher as the lane and I guess the game moves on here. In fact, he's taking right click damage, and he's very low. He does have a self; he can use it whenever necessary, but he'll have to be careful for the time being. Frost Blast can come out as it's level two for the Lich, and we'll have to see how Xiao Eight can play this mid lane matchup right now. Yeah. So while the Lich is nice right now in terms of you know securing farm for how and getting him up there in terms of this game, the Lich is <laughs> not going to be that effective in the long run. The Chen creeps are going to soak up the majority of the Chain Frost. Uh, his skills do fall off pretty quickly. And even if you're just sitting there sacrificing for mana, you're making that lane a little bit more susceptible to a push from the Chen. So while they did pick it up, I don't know how happy IG <laughs> will be with the with the hero overall. and. The fact that he's giving Hao extra farm means that Hao has to pay that back by being even more of a force uh, in the mid to late game just because the Lich is going to fall off. Yeah, and Hao's had some trouble in, in the previous games. Obviously, he had a rough time because of Tong Fu's Roshan advantage, but he hasn't been able to carry as effectively as you might expect for IG. And 
I think part of the reason has just been the different styles of play we saw, obviously the level one Roshan on top of that. So can they deal with the Zodi effectively enough? And, and can they, honestly, they need to do more than just stopping it from farming. They need to do some roaming, maybe even some kills here on Jow 8. Uh, they need to stop Weaver's farm. And they need to stop a lot here for LGD. Other, you know, because getting this Lifestealer farm is good, but he's not getting the levels, obviously. They are do they're, they're roaming for LGD's side right now, and this could be detrimental to the life of IG, and, and they could very well get some kills here. Or they're going to roam mid. I'm not sure what's going to happen just yet. We'll see, though. They, they pass up the Illusion Rune, interestingly enough. They're going to head down to this bottom lane and try to pick up a kill here. Ferrari 430, he has Space Shift. He's going to avoid that Whirling Death damage? No. It looks like he just took that damage. I'm not sure, but here we go. Helber Smasher may lead the way. On the other side of the coin, Faith is here underneath the tower, and they're just sitting here right now at the pull camp, ready to go on a moment's notice. They should know something's up, because top lane, Rabbit, Zhao Chuji, he's alone. He's not really doing much himself except for farming, but uh, looks like DDC, his smoke has worn off right now. Faith has no idea. They've got no ward here right now. This could be very, very, very costly for IG. A lot of patience coming in from LGD. Who's going to lead the way? The Hellbear is going in. So is, of course, DDC right now. Disruption getting canceled. Telkinesis, Fry 430, caught out of position. He'll get his way out of there. Faith underneath the tower. Timber chain Radiant's through. Disruption is up. Soul Catch is going to go. Hellbear Smasher doing damage. Jaunt out maybe in time. YYF now TPing in. He survives. That's the puck alive. That's the puck going down. The Chen going down as well. This is disastrous. LGD has lost two and almost losing three. But Yao will get his way out of there. And that's the TP coming in from our way once again. And beautiful reaction time from Faith as well. The, the fact that Lyft is, well, Telekinesis is absolutely instant really being shown off there as he interrupts the first disruption. And yeah, IG managed to turn it around, pick up two kills, and YOF is having a pretty hard time up top lane against the, the Weaver, especially since he's gone for this bottle build. Looks like he's going to be going for the uh, the bottle into BKB and Radiant's foregoing the Lincolns this game. But um, yeah. Big recovery for YYF and a pretty big lead for IG after that one. Yeah, and, and just because they got the first blood, you thought LGD were doing okay, but after that last initiation, they waste a lot of time top. I mean, that's DDC and um, DD roaming there, but oh man, wow, we have getting caught way out of position. Disruption, Soul Catcher, he's gonna sprout up, maybe get the kill on DDC and Will, but now Faith coming in as well. Zhao Tuji, he wants this kill on my way. Shikuchi damage will not be enough to right click Will, however. Now, he's got no time left. Shikuchi available in one second. He's got two wand charges, he may have to use it. Here comes Banana, no sentry wars. They're gonna have to chase after him to try to get this kill. Here here comes how he's got open wounds but no they have no vision no detection they can't grab that kill in the end they lose one hero for what seems to be nothing actually i think ddc went down in the end but so one for one not that bad actually. one for one in the tower fell yeah exactly well so nobody got the last hit but but no big deal i think still nice little exchange for for lgd anything that they can do to keep yyf down especially since he looks like he's just going straight towards the midas here um, for going the the phase boots, so every death is is pretty important. It's a big stepping stone for him, or a big stumbling block. It really is. It really, really is. Honestly, if you can get that Midas up in a decent timing, he'd be pretty happy with himself. You can see the Shadow Poison now coming out from DDC and. It's 4-3 at 7 minutes in. You've got your OD. He's been camped mid. He's actually out of mana right now. He hasn't been very lucky with the Essence Orb rock, sadly. He's sitting at level 6 with his Sandy's Eclipse. He's got what? 13 last hits, not really where you want to be in comparison, the life stealer is 40, oh, that's gosh. actually kind of disgusting when you think about it, so Zhao 8 is not getting a lot of help here. No, and Ferrari is getting a really good farm bot, he's got his arcanes up and 1200 gold, uh, so his blink dagger is going to be up really quickly. Zhao 8 probably just needs to work straight towards a 4 staff, uh, DD would really like to get the beginnings of his mech going on, but it's going to take him a while. Especially after that failed gank bot cost them a lot of momentum. So they're going to jungle up a little bit for the time being. We'll see if they might be able to get another smoke down successfully. They are carrying one right now over in DDC. You talk about time wasted and, and efforts being pretty much fruitless. That's the essence of it. They're level 3, the next support's on the other side of level 5. And that's dual lanes going to work. That's And, and that's against a jungler. They're not even getting that much out of the jungle because they have those dual lanes going. But... Uh, Odie's Astro Imprisonment is going to go. The Centaur Conqueror is roaming mid and just gets fed to the Lich in the end. So LGD, they had a bit of a rough time right now. And actually, IG is playing the superior game of Dota, at least as of right now, for, you know, at eight minutes in. Yeah, IG are just doing a good job holding onto their objectives, reacting to what LGD are up to. Uh, I guess the big things for LGD right now are more smoke ganks. 
Uh, the potential that if they get some tier 1s down, they can quite easily head into their Oshan pit as well, so that's an advantage that they might have coming their way uh, a little bit further down the line. So I think LGD is still in a fine spot uh, right now. The only problem is going to be once this puck gets his Blink Dagger, IG can start moving to the best games around the map, and that's going to force LGD to probably 5-man a little bit more uh, than... Well, I guess they like 5 manning, so I guess it's just going to force them into 5 manning. Not, not 5 manning more than they would like. Right. But the thing is, though, that puck is going to start getting his blink dagger. I mean, he's pretty much got it here at a couple hundred goals. So that that gives LGD a, a significant disadvantage just because they have that mobility. And right now, mid, you can see how is still farming very effectively. So, I mean, you're thinking about what does Zhao hate and have in, have in comparison. He really has got nothing here. He's got a double damage rune. Um, now there's a Midas up in the Nature's Prophet as well. And so all of a sudden, IG, they've lost their tier 1 tower top. But really, that's that's nothing in comparison to what they're going to be gaining here in the next couple of minutes if they keep playing this game. LGD, on the other hand, they're trying to force something bottom, like you mentioned, trying to 5-man for I-430. Not getting caught out yet. There's the disruption coming in. Chakram was stolen by Faith. There's the jaunt out maybe in just a couple of seconds. There it goes. Ferrari still alive. Nature's Wrath going as well, trying to push this back. And Zhao 2G says, I'm out of here. I'm done with this engagement. Let's just leave. We can't take this fight. They may even have to TP top to deal with YYF. And that was a huge loss for LGD. They really needed that gank to connect for the sake of the levels uh, on these two supports. That's two back-to-back -back, uh, back -back smoke ganks that just have not, uh, not worked out. So we'll see what LGD are going to be able to do here. The, the Hand of God is really crucial for them in team fights, and that's going to be a ways away. And... Um, looks like they might just have to sit back and farm. They still need to pick up their, well, probably the BKB on the Weaver. The OD still desperately needs that four staff. Uh, Zhao Wei could maybe even consider a Midas, I guess, if they think this game is going to drag on. But then they're pretty much just, they're leaving the Chen behind. They're saying, look, the Chen is no longer going to be a big feature of our strategy. We're just going to have to aim late game uh, with the OD and the Weaver. So we'll see what they do. I'm still anticipating the four staff for now. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't expect them to handcuff themselves like that. I don't think Xiaowei would try to build that at this point in time, especially because I feel like he's so far behind. He wants to be effective. And, and with the way, like you talked about, that LGD plays, they play this five-man style of Dota. They don't have room to necessarily farm, especially with Huawei of split pushing and just pushing them all in, which they're doing now, sort of. Actually, they're just kind of grouping up for IG, but... At least Weaver is getting room to farm, and, and we'll see what he wants to go for. I think you mentioned it was BKB. I'm not sure if, if that Dyer's is the case. Tower is I, I'm not. Uh, typically, if he goes bottle, it's going to be bottle into BKB because it helps him make up for the fact that he's not carrying around a Perseverance right. all game. Though, we'll see. He, he could maybe even be Radiance more aggressive. Uh, jump in bottom lane, DDC. Disrupt himself for a second, but the Prophet Ultimate's ready on its way. So he's clean him up. Not even. Yeah, the fight's still going. Looks like, yeah, it was actually rather low. The Chakra was sold. Doing a lot of damage here. Chain Frost being used. It's only going to bounce once or twice. There it goes. But Zhao Tuji now time lapsing out. 5 to 4 is the score. As you can see, Silence is up on Rabbit. Taking some damage. There's a double kill from Rabbit, but he will fall in the end. Now, 2 to 2 trade, it looks like. And Faith grabbing the double kill with the Shikuchi and then to the Fade Bolt on top of that. So, damage is coming out from IG. Now they're starting to do work at 7 to 5 to score. Now he picked up an invis, but he's walked past the sentry. Okay, he's, he's out of range. He's all right. He's fine now. He's just living on the edge here. That's what OD does apparently. So he'll be fine. And they'll lose a couple of heroes, the tier one tower bottom as well. And, and IG are starting to, I think, cement their lead with a 2,000 gold lead right now, and even more climbing and a 2,000 experience lead, which is is okay. It's not significant, but it's still something. Uh, and YYF actually ended. Um, Rabbit's streak in that last fight, so I picked up the dominating streak, and that's a lot of gold. Uh, in the bank for him, and that's probably gonna. Well, we'll see what kind of build he wants to go for here. I think maybe just you know picking up something and then heading into a hex as his second item uh, could be a great option. Though it looks like maybe even the beginnings of a of a necro book right now. Again, the big thing about the profit for IG is that LGD don't deal with split push that well in general as a team. Yao gets absolutely dropped. There are four heroes committed to that engagement, and they got the side of the timber saw. Maybe looking for more. DDC and DD are going to back off smartly, but here comes the Shikuchi and up Rubik. Telkinesis may go. They don't need it. Faith on the Mega Kill Streak. DDC, Drew Quilled up. He's in some trouble. Trying to run around the Rosie. Not going to happen. That's Ferrari 430 grabbing the kill. Rabbit walks right into a sentry ward. What are you doing? IG with a double kill now. That's four down. Oh man, Ferrari 430 is on an absolute tear here, grabbing some kills, much needed kills as well. 11 to 5 at 13 minutes in, suddenly IG are taking this very convincingly. Yeah, that was just great coordination from IG. They saw Rabbit 
coming in from the high ground, they just dropped the sentry and they just killed him outright. No hesitation whatsoever. Dyer's middle tower so, is under attack. He goes down. He's done for 13 seconds. You mentioned that dominating streak going in. Four kills. Now DDC walking in. He tried to deny. Not the best play. Faith grabbing another kill. The aggressiveness is LGD is just really not paying off. Whereas IG, they're taking what LGD are giving them. And they're giving them tier one towers, including top, which Huawei F will grab. Uh, plus, he's got his Necro one up. Necro two will be coming in short order. And DD is desperately trying to farm something. The rest of the team is trying to go, but it's just not working. Yao trying to fight Zhao. It may fall here and will. No, the Astral just in time, but only for a moment will it save his life as the urn is going to Rubik getting the kill. But now here we go. Gives him enough time for LG to get back in. The Chakram's going. Faith is very low. He's got Shikuchi. But here's the Chain Frost bouncing through. The silence is up. They'll grab the kill on Yao. Rabbit getting chased down. The Chain Frost still pouncing somehow. He's got no time lapse. Yes, he does. He will use it. Avoid a lot of that damage. Swarm is going to go through. Three already down for LGD. Telkinesis, Frost Blast, right clicks. Not there. They don't have the kill. GG at 14 minutes in. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Wow. Okay. Right now, IG. Very convincing showing IG, in game one. So. Was it that bad? I mean. They. It, it was just snowballing out of control. I think there was definitely still an opportunity for LGD to recover, but you have to keep in mind the fact that the Chen was pretty much already out of the game. We're talking about a level 5 Chen 15 minutes in. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, I think just the, the failed ganks from DD and, and DDC, if you look at the big picture, it's not too surprising to see the, the GG, but I, I am surprised to see that LGD don't fight it out uh, a little bit more. So IG, I guess fortunately for them, they take a quick game one, uh, which means that the series isn't going to drag on for too long, and I guess hopefully they're, they're still feeling fresh moving into game two. Yeah, absolutely. So very convincing one for Invictus Gaming after a tough loss in that best of three series in the semifinals. We are going to take a quick break real quick. We'll jump into the next game in just a moment, guys. Uh, make sure you stick around here real quick. We'll be right back.